understand, this was years before Martin Luther was even born. So we have ample historical proof that the Christian Bible contained all 73 books of the Bible that we as Catholic Christians now have for hundreds of years before Martin Luther ever came along. Martin Luther's first translation of his Bible into German, however, did not contain them. Did we add them, or did Martin Luther take them out? Very easy question to answer when you know all the facts. You know, I guess in one way you could say that the Catholic Church did indeed add books to the Bible. Those books are called the New Testament. Because in Jesus' time, the Bible consisted of the Old Testament alone. But because of the Catholic Church, 27 more books were indeed added to the Bible. So I guess, again, in a way, you could say that we did add books to the Bible. And back to Martin Luther. In the first edition of his German translation of the Bible, he not only removed those seven books of the Old Testament, but he also took out the book of James, the book of Revelation, and a couple of others from the New Testament. Why? Because they didn't fit his theology, particularly the book of James. The book of James says in chapter 2, verse 24, that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Martin Luther didn't believe that. He believed that we are saved or justified by faith alone. So he had to throw out the book of James because it contradicted his beliefs. He eventually added it back in at the pleading of his fellow Protestant leaders, but he referred to the book of James as an epistle of straw. He also added at least one word to the book of Romans to make it say what he wanted it to say. In Romans 3.28, it says, For we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of law. Martin Luther added the word alone to this verse so that it would say what he wanted it to say, that we are justified by faith alone. You see, Martin Luther knew that there was only one place in the entire Bible, in all of Scripture, where the phrase faith alone appeared. And remember this now. This one place is the passage that I just read from the book of James. James 2, verse 24. The only place in Scripture where the words faith and alone appear together. You see that a man is justified by works and not, not by faith alone. Faith and works. Again, the only passage in all of Scripture where those two words appear together. So, instead of the Catholic Church adding to Scripture, it was actually Martin Luther adding to Scripture and taking away from Scripture. And as the book of Revelation says in Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19, if anyone adds to or takes away from this book, it says, which many non-Catholics will interpret as the entire Bible, if anyone adds to or takes away from this book, it says they're in a whole lot of trouble. I mean, think about it. If any pope had ever published an edition of the Bible without the book of James or the book of Revelation, without a couple of other books, as Martin Luther did, because he believed those books should be removed from the Bible, even if he changed his mind a year or two later, Catholics would never hear the end of it. Well, Pope so-and-so took those books out of the Bible. You can't be the real church. Your church can't be of God. They would use it as proof that the Catholic Church is not of God. And you know what? It would be proof of just that. But no Pope ever did that. Martin Luther, the founder of Protestantism, the spiritual forefather of all Protestants everywhere, did this very thing. He added to and took away from Scripture. This is historical fact. Myth number two, the Catholic Church burned Bibles to keep them out of the hands of the people because the church knew that what she was teaching was against the Bible. And if people could read the Bible for themselves, 
they would shut that church back to hell where it came from. Did the Catholic Church ever burn Bibles? You bet we did. But so did the Protestant churches. You know why? Because there were many Bibles printed that were riddled with errors. I've read where some Bibles were counted up 20 to 30,000 errors. So guess what? They were burned. One in particular was called the Murderer's Bible. Because there's a passage in Mark in which Jesus says, Let the children first be filled. In other words, first feed the children. Well, in the Murderer's Bible, it has Jesus saying, Let the children first be killed. That wouldn't be a Bible your average teenager would want their dad to have, would it? Let the children first be killed. Dad might look and say, you know, that might not be a bad idea tonight. What did the Protestant churches do with these Bibles? They burned them. What did the Catholic church do with these Bibles? They burned them. Plus, guess what other kinds of Bibles the Protestant churches burned? Catholic Bibles. Those evil, insidious, popish Catholic Bibles. The Anglican Church under King Henry VIII was particularly efficient at burning Catholic Bibles. Myth number three. The Catholic Church chained Bibles to keep them away from the people. Again, because the people would discover the awful truth about the Catholic Church. If they could just read a Bible. Oh my goodness. Did the Catholic Church chain Bibles? Absolutely, but not to keep people from reading them. It chained Bibles to keep them from being stolen, which allowed them to be available to everyone who could read, which, by the way, was only a small percentage of the people. Before the printing press was developed, Bibles were copied by hand. Think about it. If one of you had to take off work to copy a Bible by hand, how much would be needed for your support? until you were done. A lot of money. The Bibles of those times would cost in what would be the equivalent of thousands of dollars today. Do you think there were people who might, who just might steal a Bible that was worth $10,000 or $20,000 from a church if they were given the opportunity? Oh yeah. If any Protestant church today had to pay $10,000 or $20,000 for a Bible, do you think they would leave that Bible on a little pedestal out in front of their church so everybody could read it as they walked by? I don't think so. So yes, the Catholic Church chained the Bible so that it would be available to all people, not just to the rich who could afford them. There are other myths, but they're even more ridiculous than these, so I won't try to answer all of them here. But make sure you get that book where we got the Bible. It's a little green book, very thin, take you one night to read probably. Where We Got the Bible by Bishop Graham goes into a lot more detail on these kinds of things. Now, let me get back to the point I was making about how you can have the church without the Bible, but you cannot have the Bible without the church. And we know, we know you can have the church without the Bible because... As I've shown here tonight, we had the church without the Bible. The church came first, then the Bible. The ramifications that that one simple fact has for the doctrine of sola scriptura are monumental. If you ask one of our non-Catholic brothers or sisters in Christ the question, can you have the church without the Bible? I'm willing to bet you'll get a lot of them folks shaking their heads and saying, no way. And if you ask them, well, can we have the 